Hello there, I'm Isabel, and last month I did a poll asking which character from the Tears of the Kingdom trailers I should sculpt. And uh, I put Luigi there as a joke, but he almost won. So today we're making a hiding pull out. Let's get started. By the way, this project was made before the game's release, which means that I only have this image to work off of, so I had to make up some of the backpack's design. While I was doing some research online for references, I did unintentionally see the design from the leak art book. But I still decided to make up my own design. So in the end, I made these three designs. I was gonna go with the leaf pocket ones, but my sister suggested I go with this one, cause it was funny to see the camping gear and like, what would a Korok need a frying pan for? Make pancakes? fight monsters? I don't know, you tell me. Anyways, let's start sculpting. I started with a big ball of foil, covered it in clay, then with a small ruler I made an indent all around the bottom of the bag. I also added vertical lines on both sides and carved little lines and folds to make it look like a fabric seam. Then I baked the clay and sanded the backpack a bit to get rid of the lumps and bumps. I made a tube out of foil to use as a placeholder for the blanket, which I'll make later on, then added the flap on top. If I were to make this again, I would use craft foam for the flap instead of clay cause it cracked in a few spots while baking since the clay was so thin. I made two buckles with metal hoops and stuck them on both sides of the backpack. Then added the front pockets. Off camera, I sculpted a frying pan and some mushrooms to put in the pockets. I accidentally set the oven temperature too high and they burned a little, but that's going to be covered by the paint so no one will know. Except you, I suppose. For the bottle, I had this old blue potion necklace that I bought at a convention a couple of years ago. I don't wear it anymore, so I'm gonna snip off the metal attachment and I'll use that to fill in the last pocket. I baked the bag again so I went to smoosh the pockets, sanded the edge a bit, and spread a thin coat of clay adhesive all over the bag with my finger to give it a bit of texture. Then it goes back in the oven to bake. Now, let's make the Korok. If you're someone who wants to give sculpting a try, making a Korok is a great beginner-friendly project. It's basically a clay tube with four little spikes. One on the bottom right, one on the bottom left, blend it in with the rest of the body, then two spikes on the top. One is a bit longer than the other, and it has another tiny spike on it. And the arms are also made from two more spikes. Once all the spikes were in place, I baked the Korok and gave it a quick sand. Then off camera, I'll carve away a bit of the backpack with a Dremel so it can wrap around the back of the Korok. It's something I should have thought of before baking the backpack, but oh well. I also added back spikes on the Korok. I didn't add them at first because I didn't think it would fit with the backpack on, so I'm adding them now. Again, should have planned ahead, but I didn't. Anyways, I cut the shape of the mask from a thick piece of paper, did a quick test fit. Off camera, I had pre-baked a little spiky nose that I'll super glue on the mask. Picking it up was a struggle for some reason. Next, I'll paint the mask with acrylic paint. I tried my best to make it as accurate as possible to the reference, but you know, it's, it's a leaf, it doesn't have to be perfect. And while I do that, maybe now would be a good time to give this video a like or consider subscribing if you want to stick around for future projects. Speaking of future projects, I have been planning to sculpt a Ganondorf bus since last year. I even bought the clay and all a while back. 
So I'm super excited that we're getting a rehydrated and redesigned Ganondorf in this game, so hopefully I can get some good screenshots to use as references once the game is out. I don't know what's the general opinion on Ganondorf, I know he's a villain, but I mean, you gotta respect the man for his multiple attempts at world domination throughout the years. And he's also my go-to fighter in Super Smash. Yeah, so let me know if you'd like to see that. Once the mask was complete, I painted the body and added spots and stripes in a darker shade. Then I glued the mask on and realized the Korok was way too green, so I went back and redid it. Now, let's paint the backpack. Nothing too fancy, just brown and more brown. I added the leaf veins design on the flaps. Went back in with beige to clean up some parts that I had messed up. And we're almost done. I just gotta finish the base and the accessories. For the base, I used a scrap piece of foam core board that I cut into a circle. I then covered it with a thick paste made from sawdust, mod podge, and green paint. Once it was completely spread all over the base, I covered it with a plastic film and pressed the backpack in the base. I'll set that aside to dry and finish the accessories. We've got this overcooked leaf stick to paint. Then I painted the frying pan and the mushrooms. For the blanket, I dyed a scrap piece of white felt, rolled it up, and tied the ends with strings. I also made this acorn lamp from air dry clay that I painted and hung on the backpack. I also sculpted a little cup. I'll pass the handle through the metal loop and glue the rest of the cup to the handle. When the base was dry, I dry brushed a few different shades of green on it to give it a bit more dimension. I then glued the Korok to the backpack. I also made the shoulder straps from craft foam that I painted brown and glued to the back. And the last thing to do is to glue the little branches in the Korok sand. I made them from tiny twigs, paper leaves, and air dry clay. And that's it, let's see the final shots. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.